Thank you, Donna, for your uh, beautiful and spiritual gathering this week. Uh, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm glad and great, grateful to be able to worship together safely in our beautiful sanctuary. Uh, I pray that you experience God's presence and uh, grace and peace during the service. Uh, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice in the Amen. Amen. Uh, I wanna, I'd like to share a few announcements with you. Uh, there was a lot of damage from the tornado in Catawba and Claremont. Uh, if you know anyone that needs uh, need our assistance, please inform the church. Uh, Sandy and Jean Housley are safe by God's grace, but their town faces significant damages. Uh, please pray for them, and you can give them, uh, I mean, you can give Jean and Housley a call or visit them in order to comfort them during this challenging time. Uh, uh, we have another, uh, we have great news, Hal had a successful surgery, uh, even though he's still struggling with his, uh, some pain from the operation, <coughs> uh, the recovery is going well, uh, thanks to everyone's prayers, and please continue to pray for his speedy recovery. Uh, Thank you to everyone who walked hard last week at the New Year's luncheon. We enjoyed the delicious food together and enjoyed each other's company. Uh, your hard work is truly, truly appreciated. Uh, today we have a quality ministry preparation meeting. Uh, we will meet at Parsonese at 3 o'clock. Uh, your presence and wisdom are valuable contribution to our church ministry. Uh, let's gather and plan for impactful service. Um, our conference gives us a good educational opportunity. Uh, we have classes for clergy and congregational leaders from January 21st to 25th. Uh, there are very beneficial classes for church ministry, uh, church lead, uh, leaders in our church. Uh, please register for the classes. I believe that it will give us valuable insight for ministry. The link, link for the registration uh, is in the church bulletin, so please register the classes. On January 27th, we have the love plate, plate of Love Ministry. If you or someone you know needs a meal box, reach out to Amy. Uh, we are sharing over 50 meal boxes with our neighbors. Uh, thank you to those who cook and deliver for this ministry, especially Amy. Your uh, organization for Love Plate is truly Commendable. Thank you, Dave. Uh, <clears throat> on November 25th, join the Sunshine Club uh, at the Taste of Catawba starting at 11.30. I hope you will be there to share this special fellowship with us and your presence will make the event even more enjoyable. Please come and join with us. Uh, I want to thank you those who cleaned up the church. Uh, what I mean, uh, thank you to those who took down the Christmas decoration um, of the church. Uh, the <clears throat> church is maintained by your precious, precious uh, dedication. Uh, thank you again and blessings to all of you. Uh, is there any other announcement? <clears throat> Uh, at this time, I'd like to start our worship together. I'd like to invite all of you for the court worship, opening hymn, and opening prayer. Uh, opening prayer. Court worship. God knows each of, each of us personally, and God loves each one of us. Thanks be God for such wondrous love. Come this day into the presence of God. 
Celebrate God's mercy and compassion. Praise be to God, who offers us hope. Amen. Amen. Would you rise? Uh, let's <coughs> praise God together. We're going to sing uh, hymn number 128, He Leads Me. pray together with our opening prayer. Loving God, you know us better than we know ourselves. Our prayers are in your heart, even before they are on our lips. And yet we must offer our prayers. We must proclaim our praise to you and all your wondrous creation. Your love surrounds us, and you have promised to be with us always. You know our heart's desire to serve you. We pray that you will keep us true to that desire. And so we offer our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as He taught us, so now we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Let's turn to our neighbors and share this simple but powerful message. God loved you, and so do I. God loves you, so do I. Amen. <laughs> For this time, we will have a young Christian time. Uh, every children to come forward for the young Christian time. Please come forward. Good morning to you. Good morning to you. Are you warm yet? Y'all look frozen. Are you frozen? No? Well, good, because I'm going to make us move and do some fun things today. Okay. I want to show you something. 
Callan, I'm going to give you this, and I want you to take it and go to the dollar store, family dollar, whichever you choose. Come get it. Can you buy anything with it? With that one? <laughs> Why not? It's, I gave it to you. It's money. It's monopoly money. Monopoly money. Well, it says 10. It looks like a bill. You still can't buy anything with it? Wouldn't work? No, it won't work. Right. What do we call a fake bill like that? There's a big, long word. Do we know what that word is? I'll show you. It's on this paper. Can you say that middle word, Helen? Counterfeit. Counterfeit. It's fake. So we're going to talk about that in just a minute. All right, so that one doesn't work. Is it illegal? You're right, it is. It's illegal. Well... Callan, if I gave you this one, could you go to the store with it? Could you buy a lot, maybe at the dollar store? Maybe 10 things. All right, come here, Callan. I want everybody to look, look what Callan has here. Now, Callan, how do we know that that's a real bill? Because it has a budget on it. Why else? Any idea? Hold this one, come here, show it to everybody. What's the difference? Can we see the difference there? How else do we know the difference? What do you notice? Yeah, show, see the other one is blue. Mm-hmm, it is. Yeah, 10. Callan, how do we know that that one I gave you, the bigger one, is not a counterfeit? It's obvious from the Monopoly money, isn't it? How do we know? Any other ideas? Y'all pulled it apart pretty good. What's your idea? So basically, this one doesn't have the letters that it's, the, if it's an actual money, they're supposed to be like letters and numbers right here, but it doesn't have. It has even it. Okay. We'll, we'll hold this one up. Believe it or not, people still make the fake money to almost look perfect like this is. And you all pulled out some really great ideas that this is a real bill. Go ahead, and what I want you to do is feel it, too. Feel it, and then pass it to your sister. You feel, feel that paper. And there are counterfeiters, those are people that make fake bills out there. And have you ever gone to the store and watched when mom or dad gives them a, a piece of money and maybe the cashier will do this? Or she'll take a pen and put a mark on it? They do that to make sure that it's not fake because there are people out there who still make fake bills. But I want to show you one other thing. I'm going to have to put the mic down for a minute here. And we'll have to look very carefully. I want you to see something. So you know you can show it. All right, if you take this light, um, can you come around me? Okay. I'm going to go this way. Right on this side by my finger. Can you see that bar that goes down? Can you see that bar? Can you see it? Okay, okay, perfect, perfect. All right. That bar makes it a real bill. So the counterfeiters, right, they can't put that in the bill. But you know what this makes me think of? The what? That's right, that's right. Well, you know, the Bible says something similar about us. It says that there's a story in the Bible about when they were looking for a king. So I would be looking, say you all wanted to be king. And I would look at your outward appearance. 
They were looking at somebody who was tall and strong. Hmm, who would I pick, tall and strong? And they wanted somebody who was brave and someone who could lead the people. So they were looking at the outside, but what did God say? Don't look at the outside. Look at what's in the heart. And so as Christians, there might be people who come to church, sing, read the Bible, but they may be a counterfeit Christian. What does that sign say? Okay, hold that one up so everybody can see it out there. You want to hold it up? You want to hold it up? One of you hold it up. Hold it up so everybody can see it. Don't be a counterfeit Christian, right? How do we know if it's a counterfeit Christian? It's what comes from the heart, right? And here's what I want you to be. What does that one say? Hold that one up so everybody can say. Be the real deal. So when we have Jesus in our hearts and we do everything from a heart of love, we're going to be what? The real deal. Right. I want you to show everybody. I think you all know how to do this. How do you make a heart with your hands? Can you do it? Can you do it? And then put it over your heart. When you have Jesus in your heart, you're almost there. There you go. You got it. When you have Jesus in your heart, you are the real deal, okay? So let's say a prayer before we go, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for loving us. Help us to be the real deal and not a counterfeit Christian. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, Debbie, sharing your talent with us. It was goodness. That's it. Uh, this time, uh, we have the opportunity, the blessings and gift God has given us to return to God. Uh, would you stand and offer our gift and blessings to God with joy and thanksgiving? and gift you bestow upon us. Um, please now take it and use it for your kingdom and for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, this time I would like to, uh, I would like to read today's scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12 to 20. Um, everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Food for the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. By His power raise the Lord from the dead, and He will raise us also. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ Himself? Shall I, take, shall I then take the members of Christ and unite them with a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body. 
For it is said, the two will become one flesh. But he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in spirit. Flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a man commits are outside his body. But he who sins sexual sins against his own body, do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are, you are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray before we share the message. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather in worship today, we humbly come before your presence, seeking your grace and guidance. May this service be a time when each of us can deeply feel your love and experience your comforting presence and protect and guide each of us in our journey of faith with your almighty power. Lord, we lift up those who are suffering from the recent tornado, comfort the heart of the heart of the affected families, and bring a speedy resolution to their challenges. In the midst of uncertainty, we ask that your peace and grace surround them. We also bring before you the sick members of our church family. Surround them with your healing touch of comfort, of comfort and strength. Strengthen, strengthen the hands of their caregivers and may your presence be a source of resilience for both sick members and caregivers. Lord, we entrust the children, youth of our church into your loving care protect them from the challenges of the world, and may they grow in your wisdom and grace. Guide them in their journey of faith, and may they find joy and fulfillment in knowing you. As we approach the sermon, open our hearts to receive your word. May your trust, may your truth resonate within us, and may we be received uh, receptive to the guidance of your Holy Spirit. Lord, be present in this time of teaching and preaching, that we may grow closer to you and understand your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, I forgot to share uh, that we have some members uh, Someone who has a birthday, Carol Sharp, uh, 16th is Carol Sharp's birthday. Carol, Carol Caroline Sharp, uh -huh. right. Uh, and 19th is Judy Spencer, uh, happy birthday, all of you. I pray that uh, you will experience God's grace and peace while as we share the message this morning. Uh, we Christian are people who believe in Jesus and follow Him in our daily lives. Uh, living by faith means we belong to the Spirit of God and our bodies are a holy place for God as, a holy, uh, as His holy temples. God wants us to be holy in both our spirit and our bodies. As His children, we are, to, uh, we are to be holy because God is holy. So we today, I pray that we will understand the importance of living a holy life in God and the meaning of glorifying God through our lives. Now let's talk about Corinth, the background of today's scripture. Corinth was a central trading city for the Mediterranean countries 
It was a large city with a lot of trade. The city even had a huge outdoor theater that could seat 20,000 people at a time. It was a huge city. Uh, many ethnic groups lived in Corinth, and they brought their own god, idols, with them to the Corinth. Corinth was a very corrupt city. It had a big problem with people doing wrong things, especially in the area of relationships. There were female priests in the temples who had improper relationships with the Corinthian people. Surprisingly, in Corinth, uh, it was regal and normal for people to cheat on their partners. Uh, some believed that engaging in prostitution in the temples would bring them blessings and wealth from their gods. The prevalence of immorality was due to the people in Corinth being influenced by Gnosticism. Gnostics who believe in Gnosticism strongly believed that the soul was important, but not the body. So they lived according to their physical desires and didn't think it, uh, didn't think it was a problem. Even some people in the Corinthian church still have this bad uh, behavior, this, this kind of bad uh, customs and belief. They justified their moral corruption and continued committing sexual sins. So the Apostle Paul had something important to say to these believers who were going to the wrong way. Here's verse 12. Everything is permissible for me, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible for me, but I will not be mastered by anything. Let me explain this verse. Those who fall into sexual sin justified it by saying, everything is permissible for me. This was a common saying among the Corinthian society. But the Apostle Paul responds to this by saying, everything is permissible for me, but everything is not beneficial. I will not be mastered by anything. In simpler term, he meant, I could do anything, but I won't let anything take control of me or make me do wrong. It's easier to understand if you look at other versions of the Bible. In one version, it says, everything is permissible for me, but I will not be enslaved by anything and brought under, under its power, allowing it to control me. Christians have freedom given by the Lord, but we choose not to use it to commit sin. As children of God, everything is permissible for us. We are not under the law anymore. We are not enslaved to sin. We enjoy freedom, freedom in Christ. We use our freedom under God's authority in alignment with His word. So we must understand the difference between true freedom and indulgence. When someone commits a sin and says, everything is permissible for me, that's not true freedom. It's disobedience before God. It might be freedom for those who are not in Christ, but it goes against our faith in Christ. True freedom for a believer is to be to live a holy life in Christ and to live under His authority. Please imagine a child who does whatever they want. They skip school and ignore their parents' advice and guidance for their lives. If that children then claim, I'm free to do what I, what I want, that's not true freedom. It's just the indulgence. The true freedom of Christian is experienced only in Jesus Christ. 
when we follow His guidance, we are truly secure and can enjoy His freedom. It's about enjoying true independence under God's authority. A child enjoys true freedom when they listen to and trust their parents. We should examine uh, whether we are in, indulging ourselves like the Corinthians did. Sometimes we can wrongly use the freedom we have. Instead of following God's rules, we may end up living according to our own desire. It is a sin when we live based on our own desire rather than following God's law. Sometimes we rely more on our own experiences and knowledge than on what God says in His Word. This can make us self-indulgent. When someone doesn't play musical piece according to the musical score, we don't call it a great performance. A great performance is when we play according to the musical piece. Similarly, in life, following the truth of God is possible when we live our lives according to His word. I pray, I pray that you will live your life in the authority and truth of God. In some cases, we don't follow God's law, but we follow others in their bad behavior. Please imagine a scenario within the church community um, where there is a practice that doesn't align with God's principle. Not our church, probably the other church. Uh, I could be, it could be an attitude of gossip, bullying, or lack of genuine love and care for one another. You might witness this scenario. Instead of standing firm in God's value, we may rationalize it by, as, rationalize it by saying, well, everyone else seem to be, seems to be participating in this behavior. It doesn't seem like a big deal to me, and you will end up doing something wrong together. In Korea, they are just saying, following your friends down the wrong path. In doing so, you might unintentionally ignore God's authority and convince yourself that it is acceptable to follow others' wrong behavior within the church. It is a sort of way we deviate from God's will as we rationalize our action by blindly following others. Church community must also be held accountable to God's stands and not sacrifice their values based on the action of those around them. You should be aware of being influenced by the wrong action of those around us. Let's strive to uphold God's stands even when we face with the temptation of conformity with our own community. The Apostle Paul warns the Corinthians who excuse their sins in verse 13. He talks about the same. Could you read it together please? For food, the stomach, and the stomach for food. But God will destroy them both. The body is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Amen. The saying, food for the stomach, and the stomach food, was common at that time. When they... Uh, rationalize their sins. It means that it's natural to eat when you are hungry. Uh, some Corinthians use the eat to justify in, inappropriate relationship with the woman in the temple. Whenever they committed a sin, they uh, tended, to, tended to rationalize it with the idea of food for the stomach and the stomach for food. But the Apostle Paul strongly warned that our bodies are meant for the Lord, 
and not for sexual immorality. <clears throat> so what is our body for? Our bodies are for the Lord alone. That is the Lord, that is the Lord is glorified through all the actions of our bodies and with the fruits of our life. What does it mean that God is glorified by the fruits of our lives? Jesus gave us the first example. He embraced the socially marginalized whom religious people have discriminated against. At the time, religious people like the Pharisees and Sadducees believed they were holy before God while excluding the socially weak. But Jesus was with the socially weak and he embraced them. Jesus with the sick and the sinners. The religious people of the, of the day used the scripture to condemn them as unclean. But Jesus embraced them. They understood the Bible in their own way and used it to judge their neighbors. But Jesus loved the people who were rejected and condemned by the majority. This was the image and life of Jesus Christ, who glorified God. Do we have an image of Jesus' life in us? If we have a heart to help the marginalized people around us, then we are the body of Christ. Then we are the children of God who glorify God through our life. The situation in the Corinthian church and in the time of judge is similar to today. At that time, there was no king in Israel. Every man did what was right in his own eyes. Everyone lived as the master of their own life. They did not follow God's rule. They did not live before God. Everyone was the king of their own life and lived as they pleased. But those who lived as, their, as they pleased didn't know, <clears throat> didn't know what they were doing wrong before God. They were the master of their own life. This is the same today as it was in the past. The Pharisees and Sadducees who were most blamed and criticized, criticized by Jesus thought they were living according to God's will, according to God's word. The most common word out of their mouth was that they loved God. So we could see that through the Pharisees and Sadducees that faith is not demonstrated by word, but by fruits of the Holy Spirit, that is by actions. Our body is temple for God, and it doesn't belong to us. In verse 19, it says, do you, <clears throat> do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you, uh, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. Our bodies become a temple since the King, God, is within us. And our bodies belong to God because he bought us through Jesus Christ. Let's read verse 20 together. You were bought at peace. Uh, 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 let me read it for you. You were bought at a price. So honor God with your body. Our lives belong completely to God. And we shouldn't think that our bodies are just for our own desire and pleasure. We must use our bodies the way the Lord wants us. What does it mean to use our bodies for God? Romans chapter 6 verse 13 said, uh, could you read it together please? Ready, go. Do not offer the part of your body to sin as an instrument of wickedness, but rather offer yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and offer the power of your body to Him. We, 
we have to, we must give our bodies as an instrument of righteousness to God. In verse, uh, in this verse, instrument of righteousness refers to using our body for spreading the gospel, serving the church, and helping our neighbors. It's an example of using our bodies for, for God. Please ask yourself, who you belong to? Is it God, yourself, or someone else? A Christian li uh, lives for God and serves others, not just themselves. A Christian does not live a self-serving life, but serve the weak in the world as Jesus did. We were bought at a price, and our lives belong to completely God. So let's use our freedom to serve the Lord, spread the gospel, and help our neighbors. As real Christians, we don't live for ourselves, but for God and others. I pray that you live in the Lord, Lord's freedom, and serve Him with your lives. Friends, this is all said in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Would you rise? At this time, let's offer our faith as found in the Apostles' Creed. Let's confess our faith together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us close our time together in Him as we sing hymn number 468, Dear Jesus, in whose life I see. Lord, as we go from this place, may your Holy Spirit continue to guide us, transforming our lives into instrument of righteousness. May our, may our bodies and actions bring glory to you, reflecting the love and compassion demonstrated by our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, as we dismiss, may the peace of God the Father the grace of Jesus the Son, the guidance and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen.